My name is James Smith, and I'm the captain assigned to the El Centro campus of the Dallas County Community College PD. Would everyone please rise and join me in the presentation of the colors and reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. I was our Dallas County Police Department Honor Guard. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Jose Adamas, and I serve as president of El Centro College. July 7th, 2016, is a dark chapter in the history of law enforcement in the da county of Dallas, in the city as a whole, in the district, and in the 53-year history of the college. El Centro College, here in this building, was the epicenter of senseless violence and loss of life. Four Dallas Police Department officers, Senior Corporal Lorne Ahearns, Officer Michael Kroll, Sergeant Michael Smith and Officer Patrick Zamaripa, and one DART police officer, Officer Brent Thompson, gave the ultimate sacrifice, their lives, to protect others, to protect us. Two Dallas County Community College District officers, Corporal Brian Shaw and Officer John Abbott, and three Dallas area rapid transit police officers, Misty McBride, Elmer Cannon, and Jesus Retano, were injured in the line of duty on that evening. I have been informed that there may be other officers that were also injured whose names will be added to the plaque. In the days and weeks following the tragedy, the college district and the community came together to honor the fallen and to say that we will not be defined by the actions of an evil person. We are better than this. Dallas is better than this. We are El Centro Strong. The title of today's program is Remembrance and Resilience. The tragic events of that evening are indelibly seared in our communal memories. We will not forget. And we say to all to hear that we have come together to defeat evil and we will not be defined by the actions of an evil individual. Today we mourn the lives cut short by unspeakable evil and we offer an artistic visual installation representation by the artist Ryder Richards to one of the fallen and the injured police officers. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Ms. Deanna Flores, Dallas County Community College District Board of Trustees Chair. Thank you, Dr. Adamis. Uh, we are honored and privileged to have many first responders with us today. 
Thank you for your presence, and most importantly, thank you for your service. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Dallas County Community College District. We are here today to acknowledge the resilience of our community and to honor, to remember, the heroism of five officers. DPD Senior Corporal Lauren Ahrens, DPD Officer Michael Kroll, DPD Sergeant Michael Smith, DPD Officer Patrick Zamaripa, and DART Officer Brent Thomas. As to the fallen officers and all officers on that tragic day, from D DPD, DART, and DCCD, quoting from Calvin Coolidge, heroism is not only in the man, but in the occasion. All our first responders certainly rose to the occasion on that day and because of their heroism, prevented additional loss of life. By dedication of the Resilience and Remembrance installation at El Centro College's main entrance, all students and others who enter here and all who drive down Elm Street at night will remember how we were served by the sacrifice of those heroes on July 7, 2016. We are resilient. We will always remember and we will always honor our first responders. Gracias. Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Assistant Chief Herbert Ashford. I'm here on behalf of our Police Chief Loretta Hill, who is unable to be here, and she sends her best wishes and regards. As we gather here to remember the bravery and the sacrifice of the officers that faithful July day, I find myself in a unique position. Being here and being able to speak today has a great significance for me. First, three years ago, I was a Dallas police officer, and I was one of the officers that responded downtown amidst the chaos and the tragedy. Also, I knew, I knew two of the officers that sacrificed themselves uh, that day, Sergeant Mike Smith and Corporal Lauren Aarons. Today, I have the honor, the obligation, and privilege to serve with the DCCD Police Department along the side of uh, now Sergeant, Sergeant Abbott and Sergeant uh, Shaw, and along with the other men and women of the DCCD Police Department who serve, protect this campus, and all the campuses, and all those who study and work here in the community college. On July 7th, three years ago, members of the community gathered here outside, exercising their constitutional right to uh, protest and seek redress uh, of their grievances. But also, the officers that were here, the Dallas officers, the DCCD officers, that our officers are also here to protect that right for them to pro protest. However, one person was not committed to peace. And because of his actions, five officers were sacrificed and through their sacrifice, this ground is forever consecrated with their blood. This memorial honors their sacrifice, reminds us not to let their sacrifice be in vain. When the artist Ryder Richards proposed this memorial, he stated that he wanted it to be a beacon for community strength, diversity, and resilience. And may I add also, it should represent reconciliation. The good word tells us that only through sacrifice will there be peace and reconciliation. So I want to make sure that the community understands that. We're here to serve you, and we're here to protect you. So let us also remember their sacrifice, and as the plaque states, commit ourselves to be ever-present, compassionate, remembering the past while moving forward and upward. Thank you for being here, and thank you for remembering, uh, honoring their memories. Good afternoon. My name is Courtney Garrett, and I'm the president and CEO of Downtown Dallas, Inc. First, let me say how truly humbled I am to be standing up here with our law enforcement heroes and so many great institutional leaders with us today. I'm thankful for the opportunity to share our gratitude on behalf of Downtown Dallas, Inc. and tell you why this memorial is so important, not only to our organization, but to the entire downtown community of businesses, residents, and visitors who we represent. I was on vacation in California with my family on July 7th, 2016. 
At 4 a.m. on July 8th, I was on a plane back to Dallas. While in the air, I received an email from John Chagru, a former board member, longtime developer, and arts community leader. In 12 hours, he had organized a fundraiser. And his email to me said, I'm out of town and watched in disbelief the events of last night. We need to support law enforcement and contribute to the healing that now needs to take place. I will support our community with time and money to get our city back on track. Public safety is the foundation upon which the prosperity and the future of our great city relies. Those streets are my streets and your streets. We want to simply say thank you to the men and women, our friends and neighbors whose service, commitment, and sacrifice for each and every Dallasite exemplifies the very best of our community. They are our heroes every day. I can't even begin to articulate more profoundly than that why this memorial is so significant and why Downtown Dallas, Inc. is proud to have played a small role in bringing it to fruition. On July 8, 2016, a reporter asked me when I thought Downtown Dallas would get back to business as usual. I shook my head because that implied that we will forget, which we certainly will not. We will not move on. We have not moved on. But we will move forward fueled by the strength and spirit of our fallen heroes and those who remain dedicated to keeping us all safe. So thank you to Dallas County Community College District, the Dallas Police Department, DART, and the Fallen Officers Foundation for inviting me to join you today. It's truly an honor. And to Ryder Richards, thank you for giving us this installation and this moment and a place where we can come to continue to hold those we've lost in our hearts and remember and reflect and give thanks. I'm Albert Martinez, Deputy Chief with the Dallas Police Department, here representing Chief Hall, who is out of town. On behalf of all the family and friends of our fallen five officers, I want to thank El Central staff and everyone who has provided this wonderful uh, symbolic symbol of blue lights for us, for not only law enforcement, but for our community. And I also want to say that on behalf of those officers who are living, who have chosen to, do our, to serve and to wear this uniform and any other uniform, and even our non-sworn, because it means so much to us. And on behalf of all the members of the Dallas Police Department, sworn and non-sworn, again, I say thank you. It is our prayer that these beautiful symbolic blue lights serve three things serve as a beacon of commitment, a commitment, an obligation to carry on with our duty, whatever that cost may be. In this moment, in what we remember on July 7th, it was great sacrifice on our officers. There were also those who were wounded, the many that were mentioned here from El Centro, Gretchen Rocha, Jorge Barrientos, Ivan Saldana of the Dallas Police Department, who were also wounded. I can tell you this honestly and truly, that if not for the bravery of DART officer Brent Thompson, the shooter had our officers pinned down and would have killed more Dallas police officers. Brent Thompson took action, and for that we're always grateful to DART for what he did. He truly laid down his life for his friends, and I pray that he is rewarded in heaven, along with my fellow my officers. The officers I lost were, Ivan, were Lorne Aarons, Patrick Zamaripa, and Michael Crow. And I worked many years with, uh, as uh, Chief Her uh, Ashford said, uh, with Sergeant Michael uh, Smith. The other symbol or the other beacon is community. And I say that mostly for our students that will come in and out of El Central and the staff. Because you're doing so much for this community that doesn't get recognized, that doesn't get seen. It is our prayer that from here, more officers will come to Dallas, to DART, to DCCD and all these other agencies, and firefighters, and teachers, 
because we're one Dallas. We are one Dallas yesterday. We are one Dallas today. We are one Dallas tomorrow. Don't allow ourselves, we should not allow ourselves to be intersected and sliced in this way and that way. That is what causes the divisions that we see today. We are one Dallas. And so I pray for you, El Central College, to keep doing what you're doing because we see the effects out there. Give us more citizens that are committed to service. Give us our students that say, yes, I will step forward, whether it's in the blue uniform or in whatever capacity they've chosen for their life and that they succeed. And finally, I pray these blue lights serve as a beacon of hope. Because at the end of the day, when we face evil like we did, as Dr. Adama said, then good has to step forward. I believe it was Edmund Burke who said, all evil needs to be successful is for good men and good women to do nothing. In this, in this effort of hope, what we seek really is that no matter what happens out there, in here, out there, is that we're all in this together, and we always will be. And at the end of the day, the other part of the hope is that's what our families have been doing. Patrick Rick Zamaripa is here, father of Patrick Zamaripa. His wife uh, and his Valerie, the mother of Patrick, they all poured their love and their heart and all their family did for, for uh, Patrick. And that's what made him become a Dallas police officer. And it's also what we lost, was everything that was poured into him. So I thank you again to all of you for not only being here and for your time, but for these, this beautiful blue lights that I pray will really mean something so symbolic and so true for all of Dallas. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Matt Walling. I'm Deputy Chief for the Dallas Area Rapid Transit Police Department. On behalf of Chief James Spiller and the members of the uh, Dallas Area Rapid Transit Police Department, I just want to thank the Dallas County Community College District and all those involved in the unveiling today for honoring the five officers, including Dark Police Officer Brent Thompson, who sacrificed their lives protecting this community on that faithful day in July of 2016. Resilience and Remembrance is a fitting name for this tribute as there is not a day that goes by that we do not remember their sacrifice as well as the sacrifice of their families. We have gained so much from their families who have displayed great strength each day supporting us as we're trying to support them. Their strength encourages the rest of us to carry on our mission of serving and protecting the community. From their resilience, we have gained the resilience that is necessary to move forward with the help of each other and the community. Again, thank you for your support and may God bless each one of you. I'd like to uh, recognize some special uh, in guests that were invited uh, this morning. So if I call your name, please um, raise your hand. Dr. Justin Lona, Executive Vice Chancellor, Dallas County Community College District. Adam Madrano, Dallas City Council, District 2. T.C. Brodnack, City Manager, City of Dallas. Kimberly Bazaar, uh, Bozar Tolbert, Chief of Staff, uh, City of Dallas. Gary Thompson, Thomas, DART President, CEO, DART. Cyrus Safrani, Lieutenant of Police, City of Dallas. Sergeant Dimitrik Benny Penny, Sergeant Dallas Fallen Officer Foundation, Martin Kramer, Vice President, Public Safety, Downtown Dallas, uh, Inc., and also Enrique and Valerie Zamaripi, the, off the parents of the officer, Patrick Zamaripa, that gave his life on that fateful evening. Now, if you would all join me, we're going to go outside to the Elm Street entrance of El Centro to do the unveiling of the plaque that we have that commemorates the fallen officers and those that were injured. And also we'll have an opportunity for the artists to talk about uh, the artistic representation and the symbolism that is included in the blue lights as well. So please join me for just a few minutes. I know it's hot, <laughs> but um, please join me out there. Thank you.
particular is I introduce Professor Omar Hernandez, who will introduce the artist, who will then speak a little bit about his uh, the meaning of his artwork, and then we're going to do the unveiling now. Omar? I'm faculty member Omar Hernandez. I serve on the aesthetics committee for El Centro College. Uh, that was part of the process to uh, get this project going. Um, I would like to acknowledge my fellow colleagues and committee members who are integral to establishing the vision of this project. I would also like to thank Dr. Adamas, uh, Lenora Reese, Jeremy McClellan, and everyone who had a part in, the, in making this event and project possible. It's my pleasure to introduce the artist who designed the Resilience and Remembrance entrance, Ryder Richards. Ryder has deep roots in Texas and works in the Dallas area as an artist, a writer, and art curator. He earned the BFA in painting with a minor in architecture you know, from the Tech, Texas Tech University and an MFA from Texas Christian University. He's participated in many national and international exhibitions and continues to explore concepts and materials in contemporary art. Thanks, Omar. Um, so I would like to thank the Aesthetics Committee of the Bell Central College who helped out and the facilities crew who really made this entire project possible. Uh, there was a lot of help from outside that came in to make this all work and really happy with the results and that we have once again, a symbol of resilience and remembrance here at El Centro College. There's something about the piece that I really enjoy that it, it moves both sort of backwards and forwards at the same time. We can look backward, and yet it acts as a tool to help us move forwards. And so both let these lights being a beacon and a symbol that's part memorial and it's part shrine to this past. And at the same time, this can help us move forward as a beacon for those that are in the community. When you come by, you can see it, you can remember something, but you're also reminded of El Centro's resilience during these tragic events, the way the community reacted, and I think in that way, it can really uphold the values that we want. Uh, one of the benefits of the piece, I think, is that at night, you have this shining blue light that's here. And if you're walking around downtown and you feel threatened, right, you feel uncomfortable, this acts as a beacon and a wayfinding path where you can come to a safe place. Thank you. I'd like to uh, begin the unveiling. If I could have those that uh, indicated before the unveiling, please come forward. We'll do that. Notice that the display is, is here. It, you'll see the blue lights. And 
then El Centro College, hopefully in the next three to four years, will be relocating to another location with the Central Business District. And as my conversation was with Trustee Flores, the plaques will come with us, as, a, as well as another representation of the blue lights will also be part of that exhibit that will be in the new location of El Centro College. We talked about that this is not something that we will forget. We will never forget this. And this is part of the history of our college and we are bringing this exhibit with us as well. Thank you so much. So those of you that would like to come inside, there's some of the pictures. And there's another clearer inside that is on the side.